Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for The Daily Blob, where we remind you every single day there is more than one way to skin a cat. If you have a cat that needs to be skinned, there's probably a couple dozen ways to do that. And the same is true in the technology world, right? If you're trying to solve a problem, there are probably a lot of different ways to try to solve that problem. And it's very easy to get tunnel visioned and think that basically there's only one product or service or company that will be able to do what it is that you need to do. So this is important currently in the AI space. One of the things I've been screaming about a lot is that there is this hyper focus on NVIDIA. Everything from uh, the, the shareholders of NVIDIA put pushing their stock up to like $4 trillion valuation at this point, all the way over to our AI diffusion rules uh, pushed by Biden and then, then Trump and to try to, to keep China you know, from progressing in the AI world. One of the things that I've been arguing is that NVIDIA has been the front runner. They have been the leader in this current, current generation of the AI space, but there's no real reason to believe they will keep uh, that that first mover advantage. That basically, uh, as people figure out what problems they actually need to solve, uh, they will be, you know, using different hardware. There's a, there's a lot of questions right now about ASICs. So basically. Um, uh, specially designed processors that are only designed in order uh, to solve AI type problems uh, and that they're more cost effective than NVIDIA's GPUs. <clears throat> uh, we see this with uh, um, uh, the Google. Google has their own uh, AI processors that they actually create. They're not NVIDIA, they're their, their own processors. Um, they have a Meta, basically is creating their own uh, processors too. Uh, you have Amazon trying to create their own processors. And what you're starting to see now is more and more companies at that hardware level actually trying to design processors in order to solve the problems uh, that they're looking to solve. I think one of the curious things we get into with NVIDIA and GPUs at the moment is I almost wonder if we're hitting uh, the CPU moment of GPUs. So what I mean by that is that CPUs are central processing units. So they're, they're general per, uh, purpose processing units for computers. So back when we had 286 computers and 386 computers and 486 computers, not a lot was being done with graphics and that type of thing. And so the idea is that C the CPU ran everything. The CPU ran everything from how information got stored to the hard drive to when you were playing a video game, what was shown on the screen. Uh, the issue is, is when you're doing graphics or when you're doing AI type tasks, uh, that the CPUs weren't great because they were general processing uh, uh, units. They were designed to do a whole bunch of different things. And so uh, the GPUs came out and the idea there is that they were designed to do only a few tasks, but do them very, 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 very well. And so now you look at 2025 uh, and CPUs are ever less significant. Uh, when you're buying computers and servers, and the GPUs are more significant. But what's kind of curious now, again, with NVIDIA and GPUs, if you start looking at GPUs and how GPUs are being used, right, GPUs aren't just simply being used for video games anymore. They're being used for a lot of these AI tasks. Well, here's the thing. You need certain resources in order to computer vision. You need certain resources in, in order to train AI models. You need certain resources to do inference, actually use the AI models. You may use need different resources to do different things within the model stack or whatever. And so at a certain point, the GPU actually becomes like a general purpose GPU. And so if you can start targeting, you can start creating hardware that targets the specific task that you're trying to accomplish, uh, you might be able to get hardware that is a hell of a lot uh, less expensive, a hell of a lot more energy efficient, uh, and actually more efficient with producing results if it only does that one specific thing. So I kind of think this is interesting right now uh, with this uh, NVIDIA challenger, Grok, uh, who basically what they're doing is they're focusing on only uh, AI chips that do inference, basically using uh, these LLM models, uh, not in the actual training, uh, with the idea that they'll build out these data centers that will be hyper efficient uh, for actually being able to run models. I think that's kind of curious uh, to think about going forward. Uh, before I get there, I do have to do the spiel for today. I've got to advertise, even though I'm advertising my own stuff, silicondojo.com. If you don't know about silicondojo.com, uh, we're currently doing a lot of fireside chats. Uh, so next Monday, uh, we're going to have Lewis Rossman uh, coming to do a Zoom fireside chat. We're going to be talking about... Um, 
his new thing. Lutu, Futu, Futu, Futu. No, Futo, Fulu, Fulu. <laughs> I'm getting so confused. I've done these videos so many times now. Anyways, we're going to have Lewis Rossman on. If you know Lewis Rossman, we're going to have Lewis Rossman on a Monday. And then we're going to have David Cox. Uh, he's a VP of AI stuff over at IBM. Uh, and he's going to be there for a fireside chat on uh, Thursday. Uh, so go to silicondojo.com and sign up for those. You're able to ask questions during the Zoom meeting. I am trying to bring real technology professionals to you so they can crap on your dreams. <laughs> crap on your dream. Eli, Eli, I'm so mad and frustrated and angry. Just every day, you're just you're just so arrogant and egotistical, and you're crapping on your our dreams all the time. This is just, this just isn't right. I have heard you. I want you to understand. I have heard your complaints, so I will bring in other people <laughs> to crap on your dreams. See, I listen. I listen to you. Anywho. So uh, NVIDIA, challenger Grok, uh, expands with first European data center. And so I think this is curious, not just for Grok, uh, which might be interesting, but also the idea of like, where, where are we at in the tech generation cycle? Right, so with artificial intelligence, right? There's this real idea that artificial intelligence is so cutting edge. It's just not, right? And, and one of the arguments that I make with, uh, Oh, with Huawei's and their, I think their Ascend AI systems is a lot of people say they're two years behind, right? They're two years, even Huawei, even Huawei says they're two years behind. Anyways, even if you say they're two years behind, even if you say they're two years behind, that means they're at the 2023 level. So if you've looked at ChatGPT, if you've looked at the modern iteration of AI, if you go back two years, as far as hardware is concerned, is that worse than what we have now? Yes, absolutely. But how much worse is it, right? That's one of the things you hit with, uh, oh, with, with, with all these generations of technologies, you get the, like the first mover advantage in there and they just, everything changes, everything. There's, there's the moment before and then there's the moment after. But the funny thing is, is as time goes by, as a couple years go by, the differences between the different options that are available become less and less and less significant. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, artificial intelligence, a semiconductor startup, Grok on Monday announced it has established its first data center in Europe as it steps up its international expansion. Grok, which is backed by investment arms of Samsung and Cisco, said the data center will be located in Helsinki, Finland, and is in a partnership with Equinix. Uh, Grok is looking to take advantage of rising demand for AI services in Europe following other U.S. firms, which have also ramped up investment in the region. The Nordics, in particular, is a popular location for the data facilities as the region has easy access to renewable energy and cooler climates. Grok, which is val valued at $2.8 billion, designs a chip that the company calls a language processing unit. It is designed for inference rather than training. So it is designed specifically for inferencing, so basically actually using it, not for training. Um, while NVIDIA has a stranglehold on chips required for training huge AI models with its graphic processing units, there is a swath of startups hoping to take a slice of the pie when it comes to inferencing. Samba Nova, Ampery, a company uh, SoftBank is in the process of purchasing, Cerebrus, and Fractile are all looking to join the AI inference race, right? So the ability to actually be able to run these models. There are a number of areas where Grok wants to stand out from its rivals, including NVIDIA. Uh, in a uh, Monday interview with CNBC, Ross said, that NVIDIA chips will use expensive components such as high bandwidth memory, which currently have very few suppliers. Grok's LPUs, meanwhile, do not use such chips, and the company's supply chain is broadly based in North America. I think that's going to be an interesting thing to also be considering if you're going to be building data centers, if you're going to be uh, heavily into hardware, the whole question of the supply chain for your vendors, right? So one of my viewers years ago, I met back in 2015, uh, was actually somebody who managed the project for deploying the first Azure data center. So Microsoft Azure, he was uh, responsible for, for actually uh, building out uh, that particular data center. They needed something like 500,000 CPUs, something along that order. And so the interesting thing is he talked about was that he could actually see all of the supply information for Intel, right? So when you need to buy that, that number of CPUs, you don't simply want the contract with the company to provide those CPUs. You also want to make sure the inflows and outflows 
are going to be able to provide the CPUs for you. And so he could actually track all of the raw materials going into the fabs for Intel and verify that amount of raw material was what was required in order to produce the number of CPUs that they were looking for. I think this becomes interesting like when you look at you know, we, we've got so many supply chain shocks right now. You know, the next COVID, the next COVID was right around the corner, but you got the next COVID, you have, you have, you know, Iran and you have the Houthis trying to blow up ships in the Red Sea. You have uh, Russia doing whatever the hell Russia is doing. You have China and the United States. There's a lot of questions, reasonable questions about the, the supply, the global supply chains. And so if you have a company like NVIDIA and you're purchasing their GPUs and it has a lot of these very high value complex inputs, there is a question of what happens if some of those inputs uh, cannot get to the factory, right? You think about this during COVID with uh, US car manufacturers. They were, li they were literally producing all of these cars, but they couldn't sell them because they didn't have certain uh, silicon to be able to put in the cars. So they would manufacture the cars, have to put them out in the lot and wait for the silicon to come in so they could then put the silicon into the cars and actually be able to sell them, right? So you have this $50,000 car that's literally waiting on about $200 worth of silicon, but you can't sell a $50,000 car until you get that $200 worth of equipment. So it's kind of interesting to be looking at this with the I, the idea and actually one of the, the sales benefits being, look, we, we use a lower value hardware that can be purchased from numerous different vendors. So if there is a supply chain shock, um, our system should be more robust. That is something to be considering right now. Uh, let's see here. We're not as supply limited and that's important for inference, which is very high volume, low margin, Ross told CNBC. Uh, quote, and the reason that we're so good for NVIDIA shareholders is we're happy to take the high volume but lower margin business and let others focus on the high margin training. You know, that's what you say. That's what you say in the beginning. Hey, NVIDIA, don't worry about us. We're willing to take your scraps. But it's the world of technology. It's the world of capitalism. <laughs> You take those scraps, you make billions of dollars, and then you start trying to go after the stake. Ross also touted Grok's ability to deploy its technology at speed. He said that the company decided four weeks ago to build a data center in Helsinki, uh, in Helsinki is currently uh, unloading its server racks into location now. Quote, we expect to be serving traffic by the end of this week. That's built fast, and so it's a very different proposition from what you see in the rest of the market. So basically, they're saying four weeks ago, four weeks ago that they, uh, they decided to uh, deploy the data center. And so by next week, they will actually be serving uh, customers, which again is another uh, value proposition uh, for saying that their silicon is a better way to go with artificial intelligence. And so I think this is going to be interesting to see where AI goes in the future. Like there's been this huge focus on artificial general intelligence, which I'll just say, I think is dumb as rocks. <laughs> I mean, don't, no, 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 don't get me wrong, right? From a technical standpoint, artificial general intelligence seems really, 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 really cool, right? Really cool, really cool, really cool. I'm not knocking it for cool factor. Here, here's, here's the thing. Do I want my Tesla car to be able to write me a Shakespearean play? What? Well, that's what general intelligence would be, right? General intelligence is the idea that your AI can do anything. Anything a human can do, an AI can do, right? So your car can not only drive you, but it can also create you a Shakespearean sonnet, uh, or it can give you recipes for the food that you just bought from the grocery store, uh, or it can do any number of other things. But what you have to think about right, is any piece of functionality uh, that, that a technology a service has uh, requires resources. In order to provide those resources, it's going to cost more money, require more hardware, and those types of things. So if I have a car that has quote-unquote artificial intelligence in it, do I want a car that can do all of these things, or do I want a car that can just drive me from point A to point B? And if you really think about it, just, just, just grab a beer, grab a beer, grab a coffee. If you're in Asheville, grab a kava. Kavas are popular here. And I just want you to sit back for a moment 
and really think about the actual utility of artificial general intelligence. And I think if you actually look at the actual utility and then the cost differences and everything else, I think what you'll find is artificial general intelligence is a cool party trick that otherwise is pretty fucking worthless in the real world. Right? And why that's important, why that's important, is there's so much focus right now, right? With OpenAI, with NVIDIA, with all these companies, hyper-focusing on AGI, right? We have to get to AGI. AGI is gonna be worth $20 trillion. Why? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> Who's gonna buy it? Who cares? Anyways, right, there's this hyper focus for AGI. Well, we must get to AGI. Everybody agrees. We must get to AGI. Where there's legitimate question about what the value proposition there is. Whereas in order to get to AGI, right, there's different levels. You have uh, superior uh, computer vision, you have superior natural language processing ability, you have superior LLMs, you have a lot of superior, right, um, statistical modeling, all of that kind of thing. And what I would argue is, I think there's probably gonna be a hell of a lot more value and value that you can probably actually get, get some of by targeting uh, these lower level, quote unquote, artificial intelligence tasks, right? Um, I, think that's, I think that's where the real value will be going in the future. And so that's when you look at whether it's Grok, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Google, uh, whether it's Meta, whether it's any of the other uh, hardware, uh, hardware uh, projects out there, the ASICs processors that are coming out, I think that is going to be much more interesting, much more interesting than you know the next latest and greatest GPU out of NVIDIA. And I do, I do wonder, I do wonder if we've already hit the inflection point where more and more powerful GPUs from NVIDIA become ever less actually significant uh, for solving problems. That would be my thought, but I'm just a guy in my basement <laughs> screaming into a camera. What do you think? Put your thoughts down below. Uh, do remember to go over, take a look at silicondojo.com, and if you're interested in coming to one of the fireside chats, uh, just sign up there, and uh, it's all done through Zoom. It's pretty easy, uh, so you're able to ask your own questions to real technology professionals so they can crush your dreams instead of me. I listen to you. I listen to you. You're, you're, you're tired of me crushing your hopes and dreams. I get it. So I'm bringing in other people to crush your hopes and dreams. I listen. Anywho, make sure to give us a thumbs up, a thumbs down, a great comment, a horrible comment. It is a modern world of social media. All that matters is interaction. And with that, see y'all later.